sunshine, lollipops and rainbows, everything. In July 1562, Diego de Landa, a Franciscan bishop of Yucatan, ordered the burning of Mayan codices during an auto de fe in the town of Mani after discovering there were sacrifices of boys and girls, and in some cases of young children from other towns who were bought or stolen. His motivation was clear to eradicate what he perceived as dangerous and blasphemous practices enshrined in these texts. In his relation to Las Cosas de Yucatan, 1566, Lando explained, We found a large number of books written in these characters, and as they contain nothing but superstitions and falsehoods of the devil, we burned them all. To understand why, we must contextualize the world Lando was reacting against. The Maya, like many Mesoamerican cultures, practiced human sacrifice on a scale that horrified the Spaniards. These were not isolated incidents, but deeply embedded in religious customs. Landa's first-hand descriptions of these rituals are corroborated by several chroniclers. He states in chapter 28, the priest has people sacrificed and everyone contributes. Some give money to buy slaves, or some give their little children out of devotion, who were gifted until today. Bernal Diaz del Castillo, who accompanied Hernan Cortez, described similar practices in his Historia Verdadera de la Conquista de la Nueva España, 1568. Indians made pilgrimages. For the neighboring tribes of other districts of Yucatan came thither in great numbers to sacrifice to some abominable idols. And other chroniclers also provided explicit descriptions of these violent rites, emphasizing the systematic nature of human sacrifice. Scientific and archaeological findings have since proven these accounts were not invented. Archaeologists investigating the sacred cenote at Chichen Itza discovered human remains at the bottom of the cenote, many showing trauma indicative of sacrificial practices. Edward H. Thompson's early 20th century excavations revealed bones with cut marks, suggesting dismemberment or heart removal prior to bodies being thrown into the cenote. In the northern part of the city stands the iconic temple of Kukul Khan, very close to the sacred cenote, a sinkhole that contains the remains of more than 200 individuals, most of them children who were sacrificed to their deities. Some pantley, or skull racks, have been found displaying the heads of sacrificial victims. These findings definitively verify what Spanish chroniclers like Landa and Diaz del Castillo had long reported. Human sacrifice and violence were central to Maya religious practices. Despite his role in the destruction of codices, Landa's relation to Las Cosas de Yucatan became essential for understanding Maya language, history, and customs. His work, especially the Landa alphabet, provided clues for the decipherment of Maya glyphs, aiding scholars centuries later. Ukrainian linguist Yuri Norozov, whose breakthrough decipherment of Maya script changed the field, relied heavily on Diego de Landa's writings. Michael D. Coe, a leading expert in Mesoamerican studies, acknowledged Landa's complex legacy, stating, A great deal of what we know about the Maya comes from Bishop Landa. We couldn't really write anything meaningful in a lot of aspects without citing Bishop Landa. In conclusion, Diego de Landa's actions, however controversial, must be understood in the context of the violent practices he sought to eliminate. As we criticize his destruction, we must also recognize his contributions. To condemn his burning of codices without acknowledging the practices he sought to abolish would be selective outrage. If we are expected to tolerate such violent customs, then we can equally tolerate Diego de Landa's custom to eradicate them. To do otherwise would be contradictory in our judgments. Ironically, his work, Relation de Las Cosas de Yucatan remains invaluable for understanding Maya language and customs today.